Whenever pumping water to reserve tanks, I know that using a solar system is the key to getting results. That's why in this video I've prepared an easy step-by-step -step ultimate guide to help everyone interested in using solar to pump water to reserve tanks for irrigating crops, distributing to community taps, or even to use at home. Get to know how to install a ground mount solar system. The first step is organizing materials we need on site, but mainly we will need this then. One solar panels and for this case we are using 14 solar panels each with a power rating of 495 watts so the total power rating for all these solar panels is 6930 watts a rechargeable lithium battery pack its main purpose is to store a charge for the security light a security light source and for this case we are using a 100 watts led street light a security light stand a lightening conductor to protect panels from the damaging effect of lightning. Three pieces of 5 inch square pipes of minimum thickness 3 mm. These pipes will support the rack vertically and also 2 inch square pipes which will support the rack horizontally. Angle bars to make the frame for the solar rack. We need cement, sand and aggregates to cast concrete to support the vertical stands. A solar inverter plus its accessories and also we need to paint around the metallic stand and rack. The second step is painting all steel to be used with the first coat of red oxide installation gloss paint. The third step is fabricating the frame for the rack where the solar panels will sit. The first thing to put into consideration at this stage is knowing the dimensions for a single solar panel that you intend to use. For example, for our case here, a single solar panel is 2.2 meters by 1.1 meters by 35 millimeters thickness. The concept is that solar panels will be arranged in this format so the length of each solar panel is 2.2 meters. The inner width of the frame will be 4.4 meters because it adds up two solar panels along this direction. Along the length, the inner length of the frame will be 7.7 .7 meters because it adds up the width of seven solar panels along this line. Therefore, the frame will be 7.7 .7 meters along the length and 4.4 meters along the width. We will use angle bars to make the outside rectangular frame and the science here is that we have to weld two angle lines to make a single use section that runs all around for the frame. Since we intend to support this solar rack with three vertical supports, first place three square pipes along the width of the frame. So this will be one, two, three square pipes. Our solar panels are of width 1.1 meters. Place the first square pipe at exactly 1.1 meters from the external frame and the second one also at exactly 1.1 meters from the external frame from the other side. The remaining one will be placed at the center of the whole frame. After welding square pipes on the first angle line frame, flip the frame upside down and weld another piece of angle line on top of the first one. We intend to have a U section where the solar panels will fit. It will look like this. It will look like this from inside and it will look like this from outside. It's just a matter of welding two angle lines together to fit the thickness of your solar panels. Weld a panel holder that divides the width into two. Similarly, the inner distance of the panel holder to the outside of the frame is equal to the length of a single solar panel. And for this case, this is 2.2 meters. The concept here is also the same. Weld angle lines to make two U sections facing in different directions, then join them together. Remember not to close one side along the width where the solar panels will pass at a later stage. This side along the width will not be closed, whereas this side along the width will be closed. After all site work, when the last step is fitting solar panels, we dismantle this angle line, fit in the solar panels, and then close this side too. Remember to add short pieces of square pipes of around 250mm length at points where this holder that is running parallel to the length intersects with the square pipes running along the width. Add one piece this side and another piece this side. These are points where the vertical stands will be welded too. Remember, also to cut the vertical supports at an angle such that after welding them onto the frame, the solar panels will be in a sloping direction. The fourth step is excavating the area where the stands will be installed. Consider simple pits of 0.5 meters by 0.5 meters and 1 meter depth, so these supports will be standing in these holes. 
excavate a small pit also of 0.4 meters by 0.4 meters by 1 meter depth where we will place the stud column to support the security light. Excavate also for the lightning conductor. Step 5 is to weld the vertical stands and support bracings onto the frame. At this point you have to lift the rack and place it around the holes which you have already excavated. Weld vertical supports onto the frame like this at these three points. As I've said before, these stands are welded at an angle like this so that the rack will be in a sloping direction. Also weld RHS square pipes connecting the frame and the vertical support which act as bracing supports. Weld the upper part like this and also weld the lower part like this. Cast concrete of grade 25 that is a mixed ratio of 1 to 1 and a half to 3 to the pits of the stand. Use the same mix to cast concrete for the study column to support the security light. Also ensure to set out the study column at an angle of 45 degrees from the corner because we want to ensure that the light will spread properly to the solar panel. Ensure that these four bolts of the study column are on level with each other. Cast also another concrete protruding around 250mm above the ground around the solar stand support. This is our final product after several welding interconnections. Repaint the stand to your desirable color or your favorite color. Maybe you may consider gray color or cornflower color or any favorite color you like. Personally, I prefer a cornflower color for the projects I work on. Step 7 which is the last step is to install solar panels, install a security light in a lightning conductor and also create a security boundary around the site. Those were the processes you go through when installing a ground mount solar system. Our recent video was about how to build a fabricated metal stand tower for a water tank. This video has been about how to install solar panels to pump the water to the water tanks that we have already built. Our next video will be about the ultimate guide or full process of pumping this water from underground using the solar system to the water tanks that we have already installed. If you find it helpful to you and you want to know exactly how this water is really pumped from underground using the solar system to the water tanks in this upcoming video, consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching.